thank you for joining us for the online summit. And I'm delighted to be here. I'm Lauren Young Durbin. I'm a career design coach and I help women define their intention with precision so they can move to their next step in their career. So I just want to let you see that I am a real person. The presentation is recorded. I just want you to see I am a real person with a great personality and I don't want you to be distracted by my beauty. But in any case, thank you for being here. Thank you for taking time out of your day to spend with me and all the other presenters. Bye. Hi, and welcome to Career Design, how to gain clarity to retake control of your career. I'm Lauren Durbin a career design coach, and I'm super excited to work with you today. And be sure to use a QR code to get a worksheet that will allow you to work through the presentation with me. So here we go. So the thing is, clarity is queen. When you are a content creator, people always love to say content is king. But really, when you're talking about your career and even with content, clarity is queen. And when I say queen, I mean queen of the chessboard. You can move anywhere, the most powerful piece on the board. What I mean by career clarity is that you know and understand where you want to go. A lot of times what happens is that people realize that they're not happy with where they are now, but they're not really sure about where they want to go or how to get there. And I'll let you in on a little secret. Almost all of my clients, they absolutely know what they want to do and what they want their next step to be. But it's almost like they need permission to move forward. And I don't give that permission. I help them realize they don't need anyone's permission but their own. And so I, I encourage them, and I'm going to encourage you to look inside, believe in yourself, and gain that clarity. So what do I want you to take away from this presentation? Obviously, I want you to have more clarity about where you want your next steps to be in your career. But I also want you to take the time, even after this presentation, to really look inside to decide where you want to go next and how you want to get there. How can you move to your destination with precision and intention? So that's why I encourage you to use that QR code that was on the front slide so that you can download the worksheet that allows you to work through this presentation. So let's go over an overview of what we're going to be covering this presentation. First is self-discovery. Basically, looking inside yourself and figuring out what's the most important to you and how does that apply to your new career path. Next, we'll be talking about career exploration and how to navigate your paths with clarity. We want to make sure that you figure out your path and be able to come up with the steps to move with precision and intention. Thirdly, strategic planning, crafting your roadmap to success. We're not going to be able to map out your complete roadmap today, but we'll be able to get you to start thinking about it. Start thinking about where you're starting, have clarity on that, and have more clarity on where you would like to end up. Finally, we're going to talk about continuous growth and adaptation and being able to sustain the clarity and movement forward so that you can maintain that for the long term. All right, let's get started. Part one, let's talk about some self-discovery. The thing is, you really want to look inside yourself and figure out who am I really? Not who you should be, not who you were, but how have your priorities and your values changed in the time that you've gone through in your life? Because we all should be changing and growing and maneuvering life differently. 
So what I want you to write down are what are some of your core passions? What are some of your core values? And what are things that motivate you? For me, what motivates me are my two adorable twin boys. They're two years old and I, it, just thinking about their future makes me so happy and I wanna make sure that I can provide them with the most options they can have and that they have the things that I didn't have growing up. So that's an absolute motivator for me when I don't feel like doing the work. Thinking about them helps me move along and it's a huge motivator. So that's identifying your values and passions. And by passions, I, what I mean are what are some of the things that you can talk about nonstop? Even if those things are like Real Housewives of Atlanta or Salt Lake City, uh, for me, it's the British royal family. I'm not going to lie. It is what it is. But Think about the things that you're really passionate about, that you really love doing and you love looking into. Think about it both in terms of like what you do in your free time, your personal life, and also what do you enjoy doing at work? Like what are the things that get you fired up? I had a client and the thing that gets her fired up was actually coaching people that she was managing. She loved helping them become better than they've ever been and helping them grow and improve. So that was something she was really passionate about and that lent to her, her values. Suddenly, let's think about assessing your strengths and weaknesses. Uh, and, and now in the workforce, they say things like, what are your opportunities instead of weaknesses? But let's be for real, they mean weaknesses. So think about what are things that you do so well naturally, or even is it natural, but you've worked at it. So you're really good at these things. What are the things that you're not so great at? And if you could get away with not doing them, you would because you're not great. It takes you forever. Maybe you're really good at public speaking, but you're not so great with formatting Word or working in Excel. Those aren't your strengths. So you want to look at what are the things that you're really good at naturally or that you've honed over time and that will aid you in your future of what you want to do. Thirdly, let's think about what's your personal and professional vision. When you lay your head down at night and you think, oh, I really do not want to go to work tomorrow or all right, all right, I can do this. What's the alternative? What are you thinking about? And I'm not talking about lying on the beach somewhere in Jamaica or wherever. We all have that dream. It can come down the road. But what I'm talking about in terms of if you had to think about an alternative way of life, an alternative career, what would it look like? Would you be working from home? Would you be working in the office? Would you have a hybrid workplace? Would you be doing more public speaking, for instance, to use the examples I used earlier? Would you be working more in computers, macros, and Excel? So just think about what does it look like? Like just when you have a motto that helps you get through the tougher times, it changes the game because when people are getting on your nerves, you can remind yourself, okay, my vision is my mission. My vision is my mission, but only you can define what that mission is. In order for it to be truly motivational to you and for it to come from love and not fear and expectation, you have to be the person to define it. All right, let's move on to part two, career exploration. The great thing is, it's a great segue from the first part. So just thinking about your skills, you already did that in part one, but now you wanna look at where are they overlapping? Where are things that you're good at, both at work and at home, and where your interests lie? Where is there an intersection? And once you realize that, you will get closer to realizing what kind of career do I want to have? Is it public speaking and coaching people who you are managing? That can mean maybe you're better at being a coach like I am or something like that, uh, or 
maybe you want to be a mentor. So you want to start looking at how your skills and your interests overlap. You also want to look at exploring alternative careers. This go back to what I said about, all right, well, what do you want to do? That's always the question I ask my clients. What do you want to do? And I would say seven times out of 10, they say, oh, I don't know, but they do know. So just start thinking about what is it that you want to do? What is it that you've always wondered what it's like to be? And an example of an assignment I give to clients, I actually just gave a client uh, this assignment last week, is for a week or two, whether it's in your phone or in an actual notebook, just write down all of the careers that interest you. Don't think about all the reasons why you can't have that career. All you're doing is just writing it down. And then at the end of that week or two, look at and see if there are any kind of similarities in the kind of jobs that we're posting. Are you looking at a lot of things that are in the judicial system? Maybe you're really interested in being an entrepreneur. So just take the time, take a week, pull out your phone, pull out that notebook and just write it down. It can be anything. It should be any and everything. You're not being committed to anything just because it's written down in your book or in your notes. Finally, you want to leverage your transferable skills. And I want you to take a moment now to look at the skills and interests that you wrote down uh, earlier and, and think about which of these skills are transferable. And my bet is most, if not all of them are. And you also want to look at, okay, these are the careers that I'm looking at. So how will these skills play into that? Because a lot of times what happens when people make a career pivot or a career transition, they think, I've been in this field forever, so this is where my skills lie. I don't really have experience in anything else, but the fact is that you have transferable skills. And so your job is to sell those transferable skills to future employers. That's what you want to do. But in order to do that, you have to understand what your transferable skills are and how to leverage them. All right, this is one of my favorite parts is the strategic planning. First up is goal setting. We all know the SMART goals, specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time bound. So you don't have to have a new career by the end of this session or even by the end of the year, if that's not where you're at. What you want to do is you want to set up small goals because you're busy. You don't have time to just make wholesale differences. So you just want to take some time and you're like, okay, today I am going to update my LinkedIn. All right. I need to update my LinkedIn, but I don't have a whole lot of time. So I'm just going to update my headline or my picture. So that's what I mean by specific things to do. You want to pick something small and try to do something every day, even if it isn't huge. Even if you don't get to changing your headline, just look and see what your current headline is and start thinking about what it could be. Creating an action plan. Let's use the example I just gave. So the goal is redoing your LinkedIn profile. So you wanna create an action plan. Most people don't have time to just go through it wholesale and completely change in one swoop. So you wanna create an action plan by saying, all right, what I'm going to do is every day, I just pick a section or a job to edit, to change or add a new job if that's what's what you need to do. Uh, you can also add skills, you can add presentations. So just every day you decide what I can do is change one piece of my LinkedIn profile every day. And that's creating a action plan that will work for you. But here's the thing life happens. So you need to overcome those roadblocks. Maybe your child gets sick. Maybe you get sick. Maybe you just have a whole lot of work to do at work. So you're not able to take that time after work to work on your LinkedIn profile. That's okay. Life happens. Take that day off. 
forgive yourself give yourself some grace don't beat yourself up because you didn't get to it and move on just do it the next day it's fine nothing horrible is going to happen just keep moving forward knowing that every small step will lead to a big change finally let's talk about continuous growth and adaptation so what do i mean by embracing lifelong learning i mean reading books reading blogs attending presentations like this. There's so many resources out there, but you never want to rest on your laurels thinking you know everything, particularly if you're looking to make a change in your career or to move laterally or to make some kind of difference. You want to learn as much as you possibly can about where you want to go. Building resilience. I'm sure everyone who is listening and watching this presentation has a whole lot of resilience. You get knocked down, you pick yourself back up. And not only should you pick yourself back up, you should congratulate yourself and acknowledge that you did get back up and feel pride in that because a lot of people, they focus on the fact that they got knocked down, not on the fact they got back up. So you want to think about how you can build your resilience. Finally, let's talk about cultivating a support network. And there are four different types that I set out. Mentors, peers, allies, and LinkedIn. So with mentors and advocates, those are the people that are generally above you in the hierarchy that can help you guide your way to another position. The advocate speaks on your behalf and puts you forward and, and talks about you when you're not in a room. Mentors just can help you behind the scenes more. Peers, we know what peers are. They're your colleagues. Allies are people who have your back when something goes down. I mean, mentors and advocates can also be allies, but they're just generally people who have your back. And LinkedIn, one of my favorite topics ever. LinkedIn is such a powerful resource that most people don't pay attention to. A lot of people, they have their LinkedIn profile and the profile isn't great, it often isn't complete, but it's such a powerful and underrated and underutilized resource. So really take some time to dig into how to most effectively use LinkedIn. And in fact, I will be having a LinkedIn group coaching soon. So stay tuned for that. And now for the big finale. So I'm super excited about the exclusive offer. So it's a career clarity call. It's exclusive because this is not offered anywhere else at all. What I am offering is a Taiki Career Clarity Workbook, and it has motivation goals, your values, your transferable skills. So this, what we went over today was just a brief overview, but this gives you in-depth information about it and how to figure out what your motivations and goals and values and transferable skills are. In addition to that, so you'll work on the workbook on your own, but in addition to the workbook, you have a 30 minute coaching call with me. I don't even do one off calls anymore, but I want to make sure that you get the most out of this session and out of the workbook. So I am offering a 30 minute coaching session as well as access to the career clarity workbook all for $97. Yes. $97. I used to offer one-off calls for $300. So yeah, this is a big deal, but it isn't forever. You have until April 19th, 2024, April 19th, y'all, to take me up on this offer. And you can use the link here, or you can use the QR code. Now it'll take you right to where you need to go to register for this. So Again, I just want to thank you for taking the time to spend with me and learn a little bit more about how to gain career clarity. If you would like to reach out, here's my contact information. It's taikicoaching.com on the internet. That's my name. You can find me on LinkedIn and I'm on Facebook and Instagram. So those are the where you can find me. And I look forward to hearing from you. And I hope I get the opportunity to work with you in the future. Have a good one. Bye.